Hi, I'm going to show you how to build a beautiful, uh, mobile-friendly Drupal website using the glazed drag-and-drop theme without writing a single line of code. In this video, you will learn to use the page builder controls and how to build a simple, responsive page. Add your content, uh, drag-and-drop page. Now, this is just a standard Drupal node form. We're just going to fill in a title and leave this editor empty. Uh, go ahead and press save. Okay, I just created a new drag and drop page. Let's take a look at all these buttons we have here on the page container. Every drag and drop element in glazed theme has its own set of control buttons. First, uh, we have this green button. This is the save button. I'm going to click it now and you will see a message near the top of the screen that will tell you the page was saved, like that. Next to the save, we have the I button. This button toggles visibility of all page builder controls. It's not very important, but later on I'll show you an example of when to use it. Here in the middle we have the disk icon. This is a feature that allows you to reuse elements or sections across different pages. Next we see the plus icon. Uh, this icon only appears on elements that can contain other elements. When I click on a plus icon, I get to see a tabbed window with elements. The same plus button also appears in the drop zone here. This one acts as a uh, kind of like a placeholder when a container is empty. Finally, to the left, there's the blue button. The blue button is the label of the element and it's also what you use to drag elements across the page. Now, let's see some action. I'm going to create three columns. The first thing you want to do when you're making a new layout is add a section and a row. A section is the uh, outermost container and can contain one or more rows. A row element controls the columns. I'm clicking on the plus icon and now we get a tabbed view of all different kinds of elements. I'm going to click on section. Yeah, here we are. Now inside the section, I'm going to add a row. When you hover the grid icon in the row controls, you see a number of preset options to set up your grid. Let's make a three column grid. If you want to get more advanced, you actually also click the grid icon and enter a custom grid. This accepts any combination of columns that fit in a 12 column grid system. Now that we have our section and row elements, we see some new controls. These are the delete, clone, and edit buttons. Those will show on every element except the page container. The clone button will clone any element, along with all elements inside of it. So when I clone this section, it will create an identical copy. The delete button will delete an element along with any elements inside of it. The edit button will allow you to change the settings of an element. The available settings and tabs uh, can be different depending on the type of element. Um, for example, a section element has a background effects tab which allows you to add parallax backgrounds or even video backgrounds. The Style tab is the same for every element, and this is where you do the fine-tuning of your layouts. Let's use the Style tab to add a background to our section. So, it's really quite easy. Click on the Select Image button. When you click on that, you're going to be taken to a window where you can choose to upload a file from your computer. And if you'd like to do that, you can click on this button, and then it will ask you to select a file on your computer. Or, you can go to the media library and choose from pictures that you added previously. In my case, I'm going to use a picture that came with the installation. And there's my background. Now, here below the thumbnail, I'm going to set background image style to cover so that it will fill the whole display. Uh, this is optional, by the way. Let's go ahead and save changes. It's that easy. Okay, so next up, we're going to add content to our columns. Let's add some images first to 
bring this page to life. Let's uh, click the drop zone in the first column, then click the content tab. Don't get scared by the large number of elements here. Right now we will only use the text element and the image element. Now let's click the image element. Let's click select image. We see the same screen as when we were adding the background image. Now I'm going to add some images from our office. It's not really from my office. These are just free images that I found on Pixabay. And since they are public domain, we can use them for free. Over here, you can optionally choose to resize images before adding them to the page. If your source images are large, this will make your website load much faster. Now, I'm selecting the bootstrap one-third image style, and the editor will resize the image for us to fit exactly in the layout we made. Now, save changes. Now I'm going to clone the image and drag the copies to the other columns. And now we have three image elements that all have the correct resize action. Now I can very easily swap out the images. See, that was easy, wasn't it? Now, let's give these images meaning by adding text. Uh, first, we want to add a section header above our section. Just click the plus on the container controls to add content to the top of the container. Go to the Content tab. Now click the Text Element. There's already some demo text, so let's remove that and create our own header text. Ah, there we go. Now let's make that a level 2 heading. Uh, this editor works just like any other text editors you're used to. So you can highlight text and then you choose any options you want up here. And press Save Changes. Now let's add a subheading inside the section. You could click plus on the section controls to add to the top of the section. or um, alternatively, you can clone our existing heading and drag it here and then edit it, which is what I'm going to do now. There we go. Edit. And save changes. Now, let's add some text under our images and it will start to look like a useful page. I'm just going to do this real quick because we already covered the text element. Wasn't that easy? It sure is faster than writing all the code by hand and then editing the CSS, etc., etc. Now, um, before I save the page, let's take a look at what we have. I can see that while we added a background image to the section, it gets lost behind all the content. Um, let's give the section some padding. Click Edit on the section controls. Click the Styles tab. In this case, I'm going to add 50 pixels of padding at the top and 100 pixels at the bottom. Save changes. Oh yeah, that looks much better now. Now the background image really adds depth to the section. Let's save the page and we're done. 
Now, if you think this was easy, I have good news for you. Once you understand the basic controls, it's only going to get easier. Next up, we're going to build a more complex page by using the advanced elements we find in the sidebar, like this pricing table, for example. Thank you for watching my first video on using the glaze theme.